Hello and welcome to day two of our mini shadow work course. And today we are going to talk specifically to the artist and creator that we all are. And we are going to face the shadow of the starving artist. So I know all of us have felt the starving artist show up in one way or the other. It can show up in ways of not being able to get into the room, being able to get into the room but not being able to book, not being able to get paid for doing what we love, our art and our expression not feeling valued and received on the planet, um, no opportunities. It can manifest as too much competition. It can manifest as looking around on Facebook and seeing everyone else booking while we're sitting at home twiddling thumbs. It can manifest as finally getting an opportunity and feeling like it's not the right moment or there's some stress or there's some sabotage involved and you just can't show up and do your best work. It can show up as feeling like it's too late, that you're too old, too fat, too young, too this, too that. It can manifest as settling for breadcrumbs, feeling like this is all I'm ever gonna be able to get. I'm never gonna be able to reach any higher level in my artistry, so I'm gonna settle for this. It can also feel like the things we want are too far-fetched or far away or that we are not going to have access to them or that they're available for other people but not for us. It can sometimes feel like there's not enough talent, we don't have enough credits, there's not enough time, there's no agent who's interested in me. Um, and so anything that shows up around not enough. There's not enough for me. There's not enough to go around. I don't have enough talent. I'm not enough of this. I'm not enough of that. Or sometimes it can show up as I'm too much of this or I'm too much of that. And that's why I'm not wanted. And all of these things cause us to feel like there's this buffet out in the universe and we're separate from it. And I know that for myself as an artist and in my own life, a lot of the times I always felt like there was this really cool party, this like VIP party that everyone was invited to. And I was sitting there like trying to open the door and it was locked and everyone was inside having an amazing time and no one even knew that I existed. And no matter how much I would bang on the door trying to get in, the door just wasn't open for me. And that is an extension of what we were talking about yesterday when we get into any kind of victim consciousness. Being on the outside looking in is another kind of arm or extension of that victim consciousness we were talking about yesterday. So the feeling of being a starving artist can manifest that way. So can you imagine being born into this incredible universe where there's abundance everywhere? And when you look around in nature, for example, you just see unlimited abundance and growth and creation and recreation happening all the time. And you know that you were given these amazing gifts, this incredible desire, this drive, this ambition, this talent, this ability, and having all of this inside you and having nowhere to share it or no one who wants it or no way to use it to make money. It feels like the most unfair thing in the world. And so many of us will separate ourselves because we don't want to feel the pain of that. And so that separation can look like, I'm gonna do something else. That separation can look like, I'm gonna fight so hard to do it, but deep down inside, I haven't healed and integrated the part of myself that feels like I'm not actually worthy enough or good enough to actually have what I want. Even if I feel totally worthy and knowing of my talent, there's something inside of me that I haven't integrated that hasn't allowed me to really know that I could have this and it could really be for me. The same way I look at my favorite artists and I see that it's really for them. That there's something inside that keeps me feeling like I'm sitting at this beautiful buffet and I'm the only one not eating. And as soon as we start to feel that way, what we do, and as we're gonna talk about with all of these shadows, whatever you believe, you will reinforce with evidence, you will collect evidence for. And this becomes really obvious. You can do this as, as an exercise, although I don't really recommend doing it, just do it in theory. You can do this with any person in your life. I'll, I'll use the, the most obvious example of like a silly person to do this for that many of you may know. My best friend, Kristen, who I co-created Create With. If I wanted to collect evidence for how Kristen doesn't really love me, I would find it. I would find a ton of evidence. 
If I wanted to collect evidence for how Kristen really truly loves me, I would find it. I would find all the evidence. And it really just depends what I'm seeking, what, what my filter wants to filter out and what my filter wants to filter in. So if I have a filter, I can't make money doing what I love. What will get collected in my brain, in my awareness, in my consciousness, in my life is a collection of evidence that continues to prove me right. And some of this is based in fear because we have so much fear that something might go wrong, that we're always preparing for that potential probable disaster as we talked about yesterday. And something happens in that where then the thing that we're afraid of actually manifests and something gets reinforced in us where we say, well, thank goodness I was worried about it and I took an action around it because if I hadn't of it would have happened anyway and I wouldn't have been prepared. And so we justify the fact that we put energy into what we don't want as opposed to that what would have happened if we didn't put energy into what we didn't want would it have not happened maybe maybe it wouldn't have happened if we didn't put energy into it maybe it would have happened anyway and no amount of planning or traumatizing ourselves ahead of time would have actually helped and we certainly know this and if anyone has ever had the experience of losing a loved one or losing a pet even if you, in your mind, prepare yourself, well, I've, I've had this pet for a really long time, they're not doing well, they're ill. The minute you lose them, it doesn't help you that you've prepared yourself for the loss. The loss is the loss no matter what. So when we're preparing ourselves for something that we don't want, thinking it's gonna soften the blow of it, we're actually only traumatizing ourselves more. And this is what we do often with the starving artist mentality is that we collect evidence every time we're on Facebook, we're scouring for someone else doing something or booking something. We're scouring for that person who always seems to get the job instead of us. We're scouring for why it's working for someone else and not us. And we want what we see someone else getting as a result, but we don't know who they're being or what they're doing behind the scenes. And yet we create this jealousy or this competition around it without even knowing what's going on in the inner. And instead of keeping the focus on ourselves, we're the only place we have really real power. So when we talk about this shadow, it's deeply, deeply linked to the core belief that we are not actually enough for the things that we love and the things that we want. And if we deeply believe that we're not enough, then in the same way the victim will look for the savior, we will look for a validator. If I deeply believe that I'm not good enough, then I'm gonna look for someone that's gonna come along and say, you, you, you be in my movie. You are the good enough one. I'm gonna pick you. And so every audition becomes a chance to reinforce a wound as opposed to give a gift. And so it's a moment to look at that shadow in yourself. Am I an actor? because I love being in service to this craft that I love so much. And I love it so much that if I get the part or if someone else gets the part, I just, I, I love that this story is getting told. I love getting to be in the game. I love getting a chance to act today. I just love playing. I, I love doing it so much. I, I, I would do it in a paper bag on a stage for one person. Or am I doing it because I got told so many times I couldn't do it or I shouldn't do it, or I can't make money doing it. And I'm deeply, because I've been told that by others and I've been told that by myself, I'm deeply trying to disprove it by seeking outside validation to prove my goodness, to prove my worth, to prove my value. So it is an audition for me about getting an audience to validate me or giving a gift of service to an audience that needs it. And when we start to get really present to that, I'll cop to the fact that I'm, I only came up with this because I notice it in myself. Of course I notice it in myself. There's no one on a high mountain top here saying like, no, that's, that's not me, I don't do that. I go into every audition wanting to book it. And when I get the call saying that I did, my ego feels this like hint of relief. Oh, you're good enough. Someone wants you. You're great, I can't wait to post about it. Can't wait to tell everybody. I can't wait to see what everyone says about it. Wait, what do I feel about it? Do I feel happy or do I just feel relief because I've been validated? Have I made this about me? 
And it's okay to notice how we do that. But we have to integrate that. We have to learn to love the part in ourselves that doesn't feel valuable. Because if I can learn to love the part in myself that doesn't see my own value, I can heal the part in myself that thinks that I can't be valuable in doing what I love. And I can heal the part in myself that doesn't bring in value from doing what I love. So you see it all comes down to how much I'm valuing myself. And if I need other people's validation or booking a job or getting an agent to validate myself, then the energy is always gonna stay in that starving mentality. And so there are some payoffs to being a starving artist, believe it or not. <laughs> um, we get to hide our gifts. And when we hide our gifts, we get to control them. And when we're controlling them, we get to control who sees them and who judges them and who doesn't. So it's a way to keep ourselves safe from critique and from judgment. We also get to blame the industry. We get to blame our agent. We get to blame anything but ourselves. We also get to avoid the pain of any deep personal rejection, like showing up at an audition and only giving 80%. And then saying, well, I didn't book it, but it's not because I'm not talented. I, I, could have, I could have tried harder, and if I had tried harder, maybe I would have booked it. So we, we don't ever really know where we are because we sabotage ourselves just enough to keep us where we are. But at some point, as maybe you're even feeling during this quarantine time, the hunger just starts to get too much, and it doesn't feel good to starve and it doesn't feel good to feel deprived, and it doesn't feel good to have the longing be so crushing. Because deep down, there was a kid in you that just wants to play. There was a kid in you that just wants to create. There was a kid in you that just gets excited when the new script shows up or gets excited when you watch a great performance on television and you just wanna be part of that. You wanna be in the room where it happens. And that desire has to be bigger than the thing holding you back from it. So as we get present, we are gonna connect with the inner artist in you. And so I invite you to sit up or lie down. And we're gonna do just a very short practice together. And so you can close your eyes and start just taking some releasing breaths. So I would suggest breathing in through your nose and then exhaling out of the mouth. And just get present to the shadow in you that becomes a magnet for losing while watching other people win. And what would it take to love the part of yourself that has put you in that position and that feels like that's all you're worth? What would it feel like to love the part of yourself that feels so worthless and to bring it in nice and close? And so here with your eyes closed, breathing, connect with that inner space, that inner artist. And again, maybe you visualize it like a character you're looking at, or maybe it's a color or a swirling light or an object or an animal. Just allow your imagination to ask what the muse inside of you, what the inner artist inside of you looks like, feels like. Maybe it has pretty low energy. Maybe this inner artist feels like it's been ignored by you for some time. Maybe it doesn't feel valued or important to you or to the world. But as you connect to this artist, can you be more curious about what they know, what they came here to do, than your own beliefs about what's possible? And can you ask your inner artist, what is it you want me to know? What is it you want me to see that I am not seeing? How did you come here to make a difference, to make an impact, to be paid richly for what you do and how have I been holding you back with my false beliefs of scarcity, my 
false beliefs of not valuing you and me. What does it feel like to connect with this inner artist and see their power and see their strength and see the part of them that is so disappointed and disconnected and feels so held back and without shame and without guilt, can you take responsibility? Yes, yes, I see you and I hear you and what can we do to heal this? taking what you receive, taking it all the way in. And allow yourself to drift up and out of the presence of this inner artist and drift back into the space of yourself, your mind, your heart, mind, your body. Coming back to awareness of yourself, present in this, moment. And as you take a few breaths, just notice how it feels to connect to that part of yourself, that part in yourself, knowing that it's always there, it's always available, it's just a part that's been kept separate. Because sometimes the artist inside of us just feels painful to stay connected to when we don't feel like we have the opportunities to really play with them. But it causes more damage to disconnect and keep it as a shadow part of yourself than to face the feelings and say, I will value you. I will respect you. And maybe there are people and things and circumstances in my life that need to leave in order for me to respect you and honor you and put you as highest priority in my life. But I am an artist and that's who I came to be. Taking a long deep breath in. When you're ready, exhaling and allowing your eyes to open. So to show the artist in you that you're here, you're committed, and that you're valuing them, I would invite you to really look at the stories that you've been told by your culture, by your family of origin, by any kind of system in place around you, in your life, in your family, in the world. And I would invite you to look at the messages that you have received about yourself and about your artistry. What did you inherit? 
Did you come from a family of people that said the only way to get ahead is by working really, really hard? Did you come from a family of people that said you cannot make money doing art? Did you come from a family of people that says, you know, you can do that as a hobby, but you have to have a real job, or you can do this for a certain amount of years, and then you gotta give it up and be an adult? Like, what are those stories that you've been told? Because all of them reinforce shaming your inner artist and keeping your inner artist as a shadow side of yourself, as opposed to an integrated part of yourself that you're celebrating and honoring and living from. And once you make a list and you notice all of these stories that you've inherited, can you look at ways in your life that you've reinforced these stories, whether you've wanted to or not? Can you say, oh my gosh, I had a parent or a sibling who felt this way, and even though I always disagreed with them, oh, I can see how this action I've been taking or this job I've been working or this thing I've been doing is actually exactly their belief system and not mine. And what is it gonna take for me to write a new script? What is it gonna take for me to say, I wanna write my own story? What do I believe about making money for my art? And you can write the story however you want. And I encourage you as an exercise to actually write it. It is easy for me to make money with my art. It is easy for me to get booked on jobs. It is, you know, whatever that looks like, can you really write it and claim it? And you might have to read this story to yourself every single day. And it might take a long time until you believe it because some of those old beliefs and those old stories have been running on autopilot for a really long time. But I encourage you to start to take those steps because as you write your new story, you start creating powerfully from a place of getting and being who and what you want on the planet. And no one else is gonna do it for you. And you do not have to starve when there is an abundant table laid before you.